those blue cards, I always like to just, again, reinforce the, not only filling them out, letting us know you're here, but the other side of that, those prayer concerns. Since we started the blue cards, we've seen an increase in people offering, asking to have uh, things going on in their lives included, and, and I just really think that's important for the sake of our community. And if you are a, a visitor here this morning, and when we come forward for communion and the offering baskets, make sure the blue card is your only offering. That's all we ask of you, just bring that forward. You're our guests here this day, and we're glad to have you. Our scripture on this Thanksgiving Sunday comes from Colossians, one of Paul's letters, the third chapter. And I'm going to invite you to hear these words. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against you, forgive each other. And just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. And be thankful. Join me in prayer. Grant us the wisdom of your grace, living Lord, so that this passage of Scripture can become for us your living word. Amen. I remember the first time I was invited over to a girlfriend's house for dinner with her parents. I was pretty anxious about the whole thing. And yet, at the time, my grandmother was living with us. And before I headed out the door, she sat me down to give me some advice. She said to me some of the basics. Remember, when you're sitting at the table, sit up straight. Don't put your elbows on the table. Don't talk with your mouth full. And she said, remember to be thankful. She went on to say, because any young girl, what she really wants in a young man is somebody who is thankful. I'm not too sure if that was entirely correct, but, but she was right. And then she added one other piece. She said, when you sit down at the table and put the napkin down on your lap, every time you reach for that napkin to wipe your mouth, use it as an opportunity to remind yourself to say thank you. To say thank you for something. She said, your hostess, she'd probably very gracious say something. Well, my grandmother didn't realize is that sitting at the table, I would be incredibly anxious that there would be a piece of rice stuck to my chin or some of the juice dribbling down the side of my face. So I was constantly dabbing my face. And had I said thank you every time, it would have just been weird. And yet I'm amazed at how often I will be seated with friends or with family, napkin across my lap, I will pick it up and I will hear my grandmother's voice reminding me to be thankful. And what wasn't visible will suddenly become visible. Things for which I am thankful. Things that I am appreciative of. And I am able in that moment to acknowledge what I had not previously seen. The Apostle Paul, in this letter to the Colossians, sounds as if he is giving advice as a parent or grandparent to some young person, going over to a friend's house to eat. Now, be compassionate. Be 
kind and humble, not too eager. Look out for each other, pardon one another, show love, and, and oh yeah, and be thankful. That last line almost sounds like an afterthought. It's a long list, and it's like Paul's going, there's got to be something else. Um, oh yeah, and be thankful. But I don't think it really is an afterthought. After Paul lists this long list of things that we are to do, to be compassionate, to be humble, to be kind, to be patient, to be loving, to be forgiving, all things that are incredibly hard to do day in and day out, he says, and be thankful. Why? Because in thankfulness, we are recognizing that those were first gifts given to us by God. These are not just a, a checklist of what I must do. They are a gift list of things that I have received that I need to write a thank you for or offer a word of thankfulness for. And from what I have received, I am then able to give the compassion, the love, the forgiveness, the kindness. The problem, though, that I see in this passage as I'm reading it is that though gratitude is, in my opinion, the natural response to a gift that is given, that uncontrollable reaction to a blessing that is offered, you have to first recognize the gift. And I think that the human ego too often squelches, squelches our ability to perceive a gift. We limit our definition of what a gift really is, and it ends up taming our ability to appreciate. To appreciate when a blessing comes our way. And in time, we begin to take on an attitude of entitlement. I deserved it. Yeah, it was mine to begin with, really. I mean, we begin to take on that kind of attitude and we look around the world and it, de it decreases our ability to say, that was a gift. I should appreciate that. Again, I believe it is human nature to go, wow, when a gift comes our way. But if we don't recognize it in the first place, and I think it comes from, from the moment of our birth. As an infant, as a young child, we are the center of the universe. Everything is happening because of us. At least that's what we believe. These things just show up. Food and clothing and other things. And, well, that's just the way the world works. My concern is that as life goes on, we continue to maintain this center of the universe attitude that gets us into this sense of entitlement. And in the process, we don't recognize gifts. And Paul says, and be thankful. Paul says, and be thankful. Now, the word that Paul says that we translate as thankfulness, the Greek word here is eucharistos. Does that sound familiar to anyone? The, the Lord's table, communion in some traditions, is called the Eucharist. The table of thanksgiving. The meal of thanksgiving. It is the time when we are reminded of God's great gift of love to us. A gift that is given, a gift that we have received. But it goes beyond just being reminded of that gift. We in this meal are allowed to participate. We truly receive at least a symbol of it. We share it. We take it into ourselves. And not because we have earned it. Not because we deserved it, but because of God's grace who invites us to come and to receive a gift. A gift. 
And it's like that napkin in the lap that every time you pick it up, you go, oh yeah, there's something here that I should be thankful for. Oh, I hadn't really thought about that. And what a blessing that is. It's that, it's that thing that triggers our thinking. It triggers our perspective. And all of a sudden, our attitude of gratitude, our orientation of appreciation is allowed to begin to say, that, oh that, wow, why hadn't I seen that before? And I think in part that's what worship is about. That's what coming to the table is about. Week after week after week, it begins to shape us. It begins to change our perspective. It begins to reveal things that were always there. And yet we didn't recognize them for what they were. It begins to help push aside that ego and to make room for us to see with the eyes of faith the blessings, the gifts that are all around us at every moment of life. But it takes something to change that perspective. Will Willimon was for years the chaplain at Duke University. He went on to become a United Methodist bishop. Well, Will tells the story of his daughter who was taking a chemistry class. She'd never taken chemistry before. But to take her chemistry class, she had to buy a big chemistry book. She had to buy an apron. She had to buy some goggles. And she had to get this chart that had all the symbols on it, the periodic table, so that she could begin learning chemistry. And that's what Will figured she would do. She would be a student learning chemistry. But he said at some point along the lines, she became a chemist. He said he realized that one day when she was helping carry the groceries in. And she set a bag down and began to pull the things out, and she pulled out a thing of deodorant. And on the front of it, it said, heat activated. And she looked at it and said, huh, heat activated. There must be an ingredient in here, some element that is activated about 98, 99, 100 degrees that causes it. I wonder what that is. And she began to write down the different elements, the different ingredients in the deodorant, trying to figure out. And he said, she no longer was just somebody who was learning about chemistry. She had become a chemist. And now she was viewing the world around her differently. She was seeing things that were always there before, but now in a different light. Well, that's what happens to us when we come to worship. When we come around this table, the Eucharist table, the table of thanksgiving. We suddenly begin to recognize what God has given to us. And it puts us in an attitude of gratitude, an orientation of appreciation. And we begin to say, I hadn't seen that before. I hadn't recognized that. I hadn't truly appreciated what was there all the time. The rituals that we participate are like that napkin in the lap that every time I would pick up, it would trigger something and make me go, Why hadn't I seen that before? Why hadn't I seen that before? A guy I knew named Doug, if you would have asked him early in his marriage how his marriage was going, he would have said, okay. If you would have had him alone and kind of pushed and prodded on that one, he would have said, it's okay, but the real problem, he said, was with his wife. And if he would have pushed him more, he, and this is his description, his ego had kind of gotten puffed up, and he would have suggested that he was quite the catch, and that maybe she didn't quite appreciate him enough. 
And then one Sunday, he was sitting in worship with his wife, and the minister was preaching on humility. And it began to kind of speak to him. And he was feeling as if he needed to maybe step back a bit from his arrogance. And then it came time for communion. And his wife was one of the serving deacons that Sunday. And as he came forward, as Doug came forward for communion, his wife was holding the elements. And she offered him the bread and the cup. And as he took that gift from her and dipped it in the cup, she said to him, this is the gift of God's love given to you. And as he put it in his mouth, he said he recognized it as a gift. But he said that voice was as if it was the voice of God helping him to recognize that not only was that bread and juice a gift of God, not only was the love symbolically shared in that meal a gift of God, but this woman standing before him was a gift of God. And it changed him from that moment on. And he went back to his seat and he wept. He hadn't recognized what a gift it was. And he would jokingly say later, I'm a hard person to live with. And she puts up with it. What a gift she is in my life. And as Doug told me this story, I got to admit, I had to nod in agreement. What a gift. We have been given in our spouses, in our friends, in our family. And sometimes we need to step back and break out of our ego and go, wow. And I'm convinced that worship and the communion table and other experiences help us to get, from, to, get to that place where we can acknowledge it, where we can recognize it. And that attitude of gratitude, that orientation of appreciation is able to say, I hadn't seen it before. But there it is. Right there. A gift. A gift of God. What happens in here teaches us. It forms us. It shapes us. It changes our perspective. So suddenly in one of those moments, something triggers it whether it's here at the table or picking up a napkin from your lap, and you go, wow, I hadn't even noticed it. But there it is, a gift. Will you pray with me? God of all blessings, source of life, giver of all grace, we thank you for the gift of life, for the breath that sustains life, for the food of this earth that nurtures life, for the love of family and friends without which there would be no life. We thank you for the mystery of creation, for the beauty that the eye can see, for the joy that the ear may hear, for the expanse of space that draws us beyond the definitions of ourselves. Yet all of these things might be missed as gifts if it were not for you, God. If it were not for you, the source of all life, the giver of grace. May these things, communion, worship, song, prayer, may all of it be a trigger for us that helps us recognize and allows that part of, of each of us, that attitude of gratitude, to kick in and say, thank you. Thank you. Lord God, there are people in the life of our community this day that are recovering from surgery. People that are moving from hospital to home. 
individuals that are waiting for test results. In this day, we lift up Esther, Tim, and Shirley. And we're also mindful of others who are grieving the death of a loved one, including Francis, Stephen, Lori, Ellie. We know, God, that you are present to them. And for that presence of love and kindness and mercy, we are thankful. For we know that grief would never move to healing if it were not for you, for your hope and your goodness. So this day, God, help us to acknowledge, to celebrate, and to take in all the gifts that you have given. And then to say, thank you. We offer all these words in the name of Jesus, our friend, our companion, and the one that gifted us beyond measure, Jesus Christ. Amen.